Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Uh, today I want to take you out to the garden and show you raised bed number five I think we're at here. It's my tomato bed and I'm also going to show you uh, the tomatoes at my greenhouse. But um, we've had some crazy weather here lately and uh, my greenhouse is locked up pretty tight right now. Well, not really locked up. The door is wide open, but I have tables and stuff all in the way. So I'm going to have to get that moved out of the way. And uh, then I'll be able to, to get in there to show you the tomatoes I have in there as well. And also, I don't know if you can see there, there's the pots of tomatoes by my shed and we'll have a look at those as well. So I'm going to do a few quick cleaning up things and hopefully the the rains and storms don't return and I can show you what I have going here. So give me a few minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so this is inside the greenhouse. This is the extra tomatoes I had that I didn't get new homes for and decided to just pot them up and kind of grow them inside here and just see how that goes for me. So I don't even know all the varieties and there's actually some peppers in some of the pots. And sometimes I forget they're in here because I've never grown tomatoes in a greenhouse or had a greenhouse before like this. So. Sometimes they don't get watered, but overall I've been trying to take good care of them and I think they're, they're doing all right. Some actually haven't even gotten staked yet, so I'm going to bring you into a different angle here and we'll try and have a closer look. Okay, so I have tomatoes on several of these plants here. Um, this one is a mortgage lifter. Um, a lot of my tomatoes have split and uh, have two liters and I just couldn't figure out which was what because they just did a, a complete V and kept going. I need to get in here. I can see I haven't been as diligent about pruning these tomatoes here. In fact, this one has, yeah, I'll need my snippers, but um, I definitely need to get in here and do some more pruning. With my tomatoes, I like to take... Um, because I tend to grow them close, even in the greenhouse here, I have them really close. So I, I like to take um, a lot of the bottom foliage off, kind of work my way up to where the tomatoes start forming. And then sometimes I'll even take off after that. And as they keep setting fruit, I tend to keep kind of taking tomatoes off, or I mean leaves off. And um, you want to come in and take where there's suckers forming and this one's even done it twice like these are these mortgage lifters really grow prolifically um, but so I'll just keep going to take these little center parts off um, there's a really good example here on this one one I didn't get so hopefully you can see that this is the main branch here this is a side branch and right in the middle here this is what you would call a sucker and if you're growing determinant or bush type tomatoes, you could leave those on and get as many tomatoes as, as you can. But with a, uh, a staking tomato or a, like a tall indeterminate tomato, you want to take these off is the general practice. And that just puts more energy in the tomatoes that it's making on this main branch. Uh, the theory is you'll get uh, better quality tomatoes. So this I'm going to have to come in with my clippers because this one's gotten pretty thick and just uh, snip that out. That's the mortgage lifter there. Um, beside it, there's a black crim. And it hasn't set a lot of fruit. It looks like I had some flowers here that uh, didn't get pollinated. And I definitely need to come in here and get this one pruned up as well and looking better and healthier and take out the suckers. 
but there's one tiny little tomato forming there. It looks like it's going to be kind of formed kind of funky, so we'll see what happens. Um, tomatoes don't need pollinators, but it's good to come in and give them a little, a little shake, and that's probably something else with them growing in the greenhouse that I'm maybe not coming in here and getting them enough of that, and they're not getting wind on them to blow them around and get the pollen transferred around the flowers. This one here, Let's see if I have a tag for it. I don't, but I would say by the leaf, this is the, I believe it's the Japanese black trifelli that had the potato leaves. And you can see these leaves just, they are, they're potato leafed. So that's, that's these leaves on this one. And then by comparison, you can see all the very, the, the lobing on that leaf. So that's your typical tomato leaf, lots of lobes. And this one is like more oblong heart shaped uh, tomato leaf shaped. So uh, it has a few fruit on it. You can see a pepper over here fruiting as well, I think. There's just some, these three pots on top all have a few peppers in them as well. So, and again, I need to do some pruning on these. I really need to pay more attention to them. And then I have three pots on the bottom. And the bottom pots are larger pots. So I think these pots are about twice, probably hold twice as much uh, soil as the ones on top. And they have two, and some of them I think have three tomatoes in them. So they're, they're pretty crowded but this is just extra, so whatever I get out of these is, is fine. So um, this looks like I have aroma over here, I would guess. Oh no, that's San Marzano. San Marzano, a few fruits on it. Uh, another mortgage lifter here. And it has, it, I need to stake these. I didn't realize these pots didn't have stakes in them, so I'll have to find some stakes for them, but there's three tomatoes on there. And there's another San Marzano here. It has tomatoes on it. So you can see even without being super well cared for, they're, they're working away doing their thing. Uh, what else do we have here? I hope it's not too noisy. All the neighbors are just like me, taking advantage of nice weather after I don't know, 30 hours or so of storm. So this here is Aroma. Aromas are a determinate tomato. So I haven't really studied it, but it looks like just looking at these here that the aromas are a little bit rounder. I don't know if you can see through the leaves there. But that's the San Marzano there. And that's Aroma. They're both a paste tomato. Uh, the San Marzano, I've heard, are, are a better tasting tomato, so giving them a try for the first time this year. And this whole pot might be Roma's. Yeah, so this whole whole pot is Roma's. So a little bit of a jungle there, but and they all, I think, have at least one little fruit on them, yeah. So I'm going to have to get some steaks in these pots. I don't know how I hadn't realized that wasn't done there. Um, and then one more pot here. And this is all Japanese black trifelli and there's three, four in this one. Um, and yeah, they're all the, the black trifelli ones. And look at those, that's, I don't know if you can see those. Very nice, <laughs> leaves, leaves, leaves. Very nice, like they have this dark shoulder on them. Again, I've never tried these before, so I'm interested to see how they're going to taste. Um, that plant doesn't have any on it. This doesn't. This one does have one on it. So, yeah, there's not a lot growing on these plants in here, but as I fully admitted, I haven't been taking good care of them either. So, I'll have to pay more attention to them, and I definitely need to get in here and do some pruning and staking. So. That will be my job maybe for later today. Let's go over and look at the pots by the shed and then we'll get over to that uh, 
number, what did I say it was? Number five bed, I think. So. You can see my yard. I don't know, can you see under my deck? I thought we were going to get hail two nights ago, and that's how everybody's, everything's such a, uh, so locked up here is because I had put away a lot of my portable things, furniture, plant pots, you name it, jammed it all under there and some in the greenhouse just to try and protect what I could. We've got a lot of rain though, rain barrels are overflowing, plants are like that. I put big jugs out to try and catch extra rain. So. Here we are by the shed. So I have two pots. And the cutest little puppy dog always wants to be in the videos. So these pots are pretty jam packed full. Um, let's go have a look, closer look here. I need to get more staking done. I just did this. It just amazes me. Once tomatoes take off, how quickly they grow. Every year, I'm always just like, whoa, I'm behind. Um, this one is supposed to be chocolate sprinkles, which has always been my favorite tomato. And I don't remember that I had CC, but I have to look because I'll tell you, that does not look like chocolate sprinkles tomatoes to me. Chocolate sprinkles are usually like little tiny round tomatoes and they're they're like they're like not they're like the size of like my fingernail like my pinky nail there and they're not modeled like this and now i have blush tomatoes growing in behind that i've never grown before i don't know if you can see these here and they have that modeling it's not as severe but they have that same modeling um so i don't know if it's so that's something to do with the soil or and the shape isn't right of this little point on the end. And I'd given some of these tomatoes away and raved to people I gave the, like the plants. So I'm hoping that theirs are growing the proper tomatoes on them because these look wrong to me and I haven't tasted them yet. I hope they taste good at least, but we'll find out. But I just find it kind of strange. They're doing this. They're growing big and strong and healthy, but they don't look like the tomatoes that they should look like. So time will tell. There's some nasturtiums in here. I'm not a great nasturtium grower. I'm a great nasturtium killer, but um, I do like to give them a try. No flowers yet. And the next pot here is, um, this is supposed to be an orange cherry tomato. Um, it was out of a mixed pack that was uh, orange monarch, red ladybug, and I wanna say yellow bumblebee, I'm not sure. And I'm pretty sure this one was all out of um, saved seed from the orange ones because I really like the orange ones, but they are a hybrid tomato and these are looking like they're getting a little on the large side. So I think we've reverted back here, which is what happens when you save seed, but sometimes I try it and just see what I get out of it anyways. Um, that's more of those, lots of tomatoes. So I'll, I'll get something out of it anyways. At least like a salad sized tomato, you know. Um, then there's more of the cherry sprinkles and see, these are doing that too. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'm gonna try and bring you in real close here to have a look at these. Oh, and there goes the lawn mowers too. So oh, we'll see how this goes. Um, so this one here is supposed to be the cherry, the chocolate sprinkles. Again, just odd. And I know some of you grow the chocolate sprinkles too. So you'll see, those of you that know these this is not the right tomato so I just don't know what's going on with that and then I don't know how well you can see in behind here back here this is more of that blush so I don't know what's happening here but I'll get some different tomatoes to try this year anyways and it looks like I have a bit of pruning to do in these too and I just did this like a couple days ago before the storm came so and then again, there's a few nasturtiums. There's one here and there's another one back here and they look even less healthy than the last ones. So we'll see. These two pots are both on a little bit of a, a drip tubing. You can see it coming out the back there. 
and uh, they just they get watered when the rest of the garden comes on. Oh, here's my uh, number five bed, my tomato bed. Um, it also has a little bit of onions down the middle and it has some celery at the other end. And as you can see, some beautiful marigolds. Um, I tried to grow some Cleome um, and I think some zinnias and some cilantro were also supposed to be in this bed, but if they're in here, they're hiding, so I haven't seen them. This bed, you'll notice uh, as we go through a heavy layer of kind of rough compost, it's uh, not completely finished compost. That's what I'm using for mulch on this bed. It's nice, it's a heavy, dense layer that way, and it really holds the moisture in. And as it breaks down, um, the nutrients are, are sinking in into the soil. Some people say it robs the nutrients, but I think if you don't work it right into the soil and you just have it sitting on top, I, I don't find it. It makes a difference for the tomatoes. Um, I've been using some ProMix organic vegetable fertilizer on my garden beds this year when about once a month. Not on everything, but tomatoes are one of those things that are a heavier feeder and celery is a heavy feeder. Onions are a heavy feeder. So this bed is definitely getting that when I when I come through and just pull the mulch back, scratch it down into the, the soil layer and then water it in well. So that's what's happening with these. Six kinds of tomatoes in this bed here. So like I said, there's some onion, onions in between the rows. Um, and otherwise it's a row of tomatoes on either side of the bed running the length and one down the center. So I've tried to keep the varieties of tomatoes grouped together um, in each row and they're all doing really well. I was even smart this year and I even got my stakes in. So usually I uh, intend to do that but like many good intentions don't always get around to it try and get you in here so you can see these guys some beautiful tomatoes in here I don't know is that bragging I grew them but I love these tomatoes they're looking great and and uh, I can't wait for them to, to start to blush I have one cat face tomato um, I don't know how well you can see that uh, but that's uh, uh, when the couple of blossoms are fused together and they get pollinated and you get this kind of crazy tomato. This one has some pretty deep holes um, So some places might find some rot happening in there Generally, we're a fairly dry climate though. We do get the odd Period like we've had here this last day or so with a lot of moisture, but generally that's not a huge issue for us This is the uh, black crim and I do find they tend to do that a lot Black cream is a beautiful tomato. It's an heirloom, I believe. But uh, this, these tomatoes, they have a beautiful, they get a real dark black shoulder on them. And then they turn a really deep red at the bottom. And I always feel like you have to kind of wait until they're almost, you feel like they might be overripe and then that's when you pick them. And they have these gorgeous ribbing along here. I just think they're a beautiful tomato and they get a really nice big size too. You can see, hopefully here, let me just make sure my camera is where I want it. So I'll bring you down here. I have a wooden walkway here and the, the tripod's on it, so hopefully I'm not jiggling the camera around too much as I kind of move around, but hopefully you can see here how I've pruned up, right up until the first uh, truss of tomatoes. And I can see there's another, another um, leaf stem that's coming out here that uh, I'll be taking off in fact, it wants to come off right now. So I'll just take that off and get rid of it. Um, and that's just because I have so many tomatoes in here that I want to have lots of clear air circulation down between. They're so closely spaced. Like I have, you know, maybe 30, 35 centimeters a foot or just over in between these. I try to aim for 18 inches, like 45 centimeters, but it never really seems to happen. So that's my black crim, and I have three of those, I believe, here it looks like. So just a quick, quick look at them there. The wind is getting up too. Look at that. You'll see the leaves are curled. 
and that's I'm not concerned about that at all we've had lots of wind we've got a little bit cool because of all the rain um, I'm not concerned about those leaves curling some people will panic when they see that uh, around here I think that's just normal to have curled leaves in your tomato because we have so much wind and lots of lots of heat or cold and back and forth so that's just their their coping mechanism there so that's my onions I believe no let me just check because I'm not sure yeah these are the Spanish candy in this bed here and they're they're starting to get thicker stems they're starting to bulb up they're not huge I've never grown these before um, but they're looking nice to me. So I've tried to pull the mulch back away from them a little bit because I think that helps them bulb up, but I'm really not sure. But they're looking good. Still standing up nice and strong, even with the wind. The tomatoes help protect them a little bit, I think, in here. Um, so let's see, there's the Manitoba. No, what are these? Roma, I keep thinking I planted the Manitoba here, but these are the Romas and they're just full of fruit. So Roma is a, a determinate type of tomato and I don't have them staked super well, but they shouldn't get too tall and, as, and uh, gangly anyways. They just need something to keep them from blowing over. This one has gotten so heavy and the stake is small, so it's falling over, but they're loaded, loaded with tomatoes. And so with the, the determinate tomatoes, I'm not doing quite the same amount of pruning. Just bring it in real low here. So you can see I'm still pruning up the bottoms on these. And I try to go to that first flower truss. It looks like a truss got away from me there. But um, just try to prune them up and let the air move through the bottom of the plants here and let the sun move through. And then I, Buster, <laughs> and I do come through um, as I feel I need to, and I'll, I'll cut back some of these stems, but I'm not as worried about like the suckers between the branches because I'll get more fruit, and uh, so I'm going to let them do that, and they'll get really bushy and big and wild, and when they when they just seem like they're taking over, I'll, I'll just trim back. And sometimes I'll just go through and just trim back like part of a branch. Some people don't, like they say not to do that. Um, it invites disease. Again, we're fairly dry here. Um, we do get moisture, but not a ton of it. And I water from uh, like soaker drip tubing kind of stuff in the ground there. So I don't find I have a ton of disease issues with my tomatoes and I, I think it's better to, to get the air circulation in there than, uh, than to just leave them and, and worry about bringing in disease the other way. Oh, I do have a few zinnias on the end here, it looks like. Right down here. That's a celery leaf, but there's some zinnias. Oh, and this is why that tomato is fallen over so bad it looks like it's popped its tie I have these velcro ties I tried them one year still have them so I use them sometimes but they're not my favorite not for tomatoes anyways they just get too heavy in the very front here after that tangent there's three celery plants I love celery I grew these from seed um, I've been growing it in my garden for several years now um, I never used to like celery and then someone told me that uh, when you grow it in the garden and you just harvest it it's a lot sweeter and a lot nicer and they're they're right so what I do is I don't I don't harvest the whole bunch I come through and I just push a stalk down peel it off and I just take it like that as I need it so once once the season is getting to its end and uh, we're due for some pretty cold weather and the plants are nice and big, then I will come in and I'll, I'll just cut, I'll cut the whole stalk off, the whole plant off at the ground there or pull it up by the roots, whatever's easier at that time for me. And I'll take it in and I just 
wash it all. I chop it up and I freeze um, the celery. I'll, I'll chop the stalks up and freeze those. And then a separate bag, I chop the, uh, the leaves up and I save those. They're great to just be able to grab and throw into cook dishes. Obviously, they don't hold their same texture, so they're not good like to put in salads or anything anymore. But they're great to put into your cooking, your stews, your soups, whatever dishes you enjoy celery in and they're great that way. It's another shot of the onions there. Again, this is the Spanish candy. Bulbing out pretty good, looking nice. Okay, so this is down the other side, and I guess I didn't show you the center here. I always kind of forget about the middle row tomatoes here, but they're a little harder to see anyways. But these are the ones, if you remember, if you've seen some of my other videos, I put my tomatoes out really early. I cover them with a hoop. I put cozy coats, wall of water. I protect them. I mean, we have a short season and I get them out here way earlier than most people would recommend you do. And the center row, I honestly believe, got cooked first by a hot day that I forgot to open the covers. And then we got two nights of really heavy freeze and a few of these plants down the middle um, died and I had to replace them with other starts that I had but down these first three plants are the San Marzano and hopefully you can see in there between all the leaves of everybody else here's a good example of a, a stem that I've cut back it was just getting really big it was going down reaching to the ground and you can see I trimmed it off there it just calluses over but hopefully you can see there couple trusses of tomatoes come along nice oh I can see with all the rain we're getting cracking on this one hmm interesting so yeah and the one down there too is cracking so they're not even close to blushing yet and this rain is causing cracking that's no good let's see the rest a huge bunch here let's see what I'm seeing Huge, huge truss full of tomatoes, but it's in there hiding pretty good. So hopefully these guys aren't getting quite the same amount of rain out here in the like in, tucked in the middle here, because that one plant is right on the edge of the bed. We had some real driving rain, so it might have gotten more moisture there, which the celery would love. Tomatoes not so much. So yeah, the other two plants, so far the tomatoes on them don't look like they're uh, cracking on me down there. So hopefully they don't, well, time will tell I guess. It's pretty sad when they haven't even begun to ripen, they're getting cracking, but that's what happens um, if you get uneven moisture, and lots of it like we've had. You'll get, you'll get cracking. So, so these are my Manitoba tomatoes. Here you can see Manitoba tomatoes are one of my favorites. I have been growing these for more years than I can remember. They always produce well for me. And you can see like that plant is just loaded with tomatoes. I may come cut this branch off that I'm holding down here just to get some air circulation and some light into here. Help encourage them to, to uh, mature a little bit but just tomatoes everywhere on this plant you can see all the way up oh I just knocked one off oh you don't want to do that put that in the compost um, and there's the one beside it so you can see my my determinants I do not stake as well and I probably should have a little bit better stakes in here but I used what I had and I don't know where all my stakes a lot of them got broken and I just haven't gone out and bought a lot of new stuff this year. This truss, I don't know if you can see how full this is here. This one's hooked over this stem, but there's three big tomatoes on that one back there. Three here, there's another three or four up here, a couple more up here. So they're, they're pretty loaded. Um, 
And then there's another plant back here, the Manitoba. And tomatoes are all on the back side of this one. But it has several big, big trusses of fruit on it. So you can see that, lots of fruit. Lots of fruit on that one too. It's just all at the back. Again, with the determinants, I don't do the same type of pruning as I do with the uh, with the uh, indeterminates, but these bush ones, like I'm gonna come through and I'll be taking some of these errant branches that are sticking out towards the walkway. Yeah, they have blooms on, I'm sacrificing tomatoes, but I wanna get air and light moving back through here and to these tomatoes, especially these ones that are growing on the back of the plant here, so. I don't know if you can see right through there, there's another gorgeous onion. You're a little bit too low, but if you can see that, another beautiful onion back there. There's a little dill here. It's just growing on the side of the pathway. So two more types of tomatoes. There's one more um, Manitoba right there. And now these are going to be the trickiest to see because my plan had been to put the bush tomatoes all along one side, and then I don't know what I did, and I kind of have the bush tomatoes all at one end and the staking indeterminates all down at this end so it makes it hard to get to the center row here but see if I put you in here to see I don't know if you'll be able to see these anyways but there's the Japanese black trefelli so these ones, some of them had looked like they were suffering a little bit from that little bit of heat and freeze too, but if I remember correctly, I didn't replace any of them and they're doing great. Um, let's sort of zoom you in here. So there is tomatoes on here. Again, these are the ones that have that potato leaf. And there's lots and lots of tomatoes. There's some here. Oh, this one's a bit cat-faced. Two stuck together. Um, there's a couple of tomatoes there, and I don't know if you can see down to the bottom. There's some right down at the bottom as well. These are growing large. Again, split in a V on me. So I'm having trouble trying to figure out where to keep it connected and tied up. I'm doing what I can with those. One more. Oh, so I must have lost one of those uh, Japanese black trefelli. I would guess right in the center here. There was supposed to be another one because there's quite a distance between these two plants. And there's one right here and right down at the bottom where you can't see. Right down at the bottom. There's tomatoes. You see all those? There's a great big one. There it is. A very nice tomato there. So the very last tomatoes I have here on this tour are the Mortgage Lifter. Um, first year I've grown these and the story behind these, whether it's true or not, is that the man who developed this variety of tomato paid off his mortgage selling these tomatoes. They're supposed to be big, hefty tomatoes and a good producer. So far, I've got a couple of trusses on these plants here. They're supposed to be a good cold hardy variety. Time will tell with that. Um, but I have four plants of these here. They all have tomatoes on them. Some of them are puny, like this one here. I don't know if you can see that. And then some are pretty big. So I'll bring you in just a little bit closer and you can have a look at these tomatoes. So here's those mortgage lifters. And you can see like how much I've pruned. Like, my arm in there but like it's probably 45 centimeters a foot and a half up and then there's tomatoes so this is the mortgage lifters so the focus so there there that's another look at those uh Japanese black trefelli back there and there's another mortgage lifter up there plant has another one here. So this one, this plant, in the, this one here, 
just seems to be setting off a single fruit as trusses of flowers but I'm only getting one fruit off of each truss where is this one here there's three three on that one this one again one fruit one fruit no more trusses oh there's one there but nothing nothing coming on it um, and then this one here got four tomatoes on that one big one here I don't know if you can see that with my hand it's beautiful so there's nice shoulders on it too um, not much coming so I don't know I'm not sure what I think of these mortgage lifters yet so they certainly held up to the cold weather that we we had early on when I planted them out early but I don't know. You see the dragonfly? Oh, gone. So the sun came out for the end of this, uh, the end of this little look at the tomatoes here. So I know this video, uh, it got pretty long, but I don't know. Tomatoes are something that I really enjoy, and I think a lot of gardeners enjoy. It's something I've heard that. Um, tomatoes are what gets a lot of people into gardening they want those fresh tomatoes they want to be able to grow their own tomatoes and uh, there's I think there's a tomato out there for everybody you know you can grow one on a pot on a balcony or you can have beds and beds of them or pots of them in a greenhouse so I think tomatoes are that kind of quintessential gardening vegetable garden plant so I maybe spent a bit more time on them than I do on some other things uh, hopefully you found it interesting um, also with the, the same thing with the celery, I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I did want to show it to you and talk about it a little bit because a lot of people seem to, to think that uh, it's a difficult thing to grow or, you know, the celery you buy in the store is, is stringy and woody sometimes. It's just not, I never liked it until I grew it in my own garden and um, I've had a lot of people surprised with the flavor when they eat it out of the garden. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this little bit longer look at things just to see see how it all is um, and uh, if you've made it to the end here I thank you for watching and sticking with me and we'll see you next time bye side note if you remember from the uh, video uh, bed number seven my peppers and my eggplants carrots onions all oh, this one garlic this one is full this is the patio baby eggplant this is bigger than any of the ones got last year so it's looking nice and firm and smooth I think it's ready so I'm going to be harvesting this today and trying it out